Okay, hey, welcome to another episode of On The Rest From Off The Cuff. Today I have a really interesting review for you from the brand Symer Swiss Watches. They were originally founded back in 1924 and were in production up until the quartz crisis of the 1970s. They were eventually revived in 2003 and even opened up a watchmaking academy in 2010. The name Symer comes from the French word uh, for the decoration that forms at the top part of the helmet. Um, it symbolizes the alliance between elegance and stability. Now, I'm probably pronouncing Symer wrong. It's probably something really cool and fancy like Samir or Simer, Symer. I don't know. I I'm not even going to try. All right. It's, it's Symer for me. But apart from the name, <laughs> um, they actually have a really cool background. So I appreciate Symer for reaching out and, uh, you know, getting this watch out to the channel so that I can share it with you guys. This is definitely interesting. They do have quite a few other models, which I do have. You can see their little pamphlet in the background, which we can flip through to kind of see what else they offer. But for me, the this particular chronograph really stood out. Now, in terms of a chronograph and see some key common characteristics in design language, you're looking for a chrono. You're going to want, of course, or you're going to find external pushers to activate timing functions, multiple subdials to measure elapsed time, often featuring additional scales dependent on the subgenre. This is their Time Square Chronograph Automatic, and it's an automatic chronograph uh, that really radiates a sporty and elegant masculine style. To me, it looks like the perfect watch to smoke cigars in. Um, there's just something very old world about it that I really enjoy. So with that said, let's go ahead, zoom the camera out, get this piece in hand and take a closer look. All right, guys. So as you can see, it does come on this great leather strap with the deployant style buckle, very clean and tidy. And this is again, uh, in terms of the style, it, it just strikes me as like the, the watch of a guy who smokes cigars. Like this is just, I don't know what that is about it, but there's something about the shape, about the color palette and the way that it just comes together. There's something that's at the same time, it, it's quite relaxed. It definitely has a pop as well, um, which I don't know. It's just something that I found very interesting about this piece. I like the pushers and that they have a very unique shape and as you can see of course my fingerprints are already all over this watch so I'm going to give it a quick little wipe down but it is pretty much predominantly polished except for the tops of the lugs which we're going to see a very nice brushing here um, and it has actually a really nice sharp transition it's kind of a shame that they didn't do more brushed because this entire, this finishing is so nice. Like I would have loved to see some of that utilized on the side of the case, but due to the fact that this is a chronograph and it's pretty large, of course it is nice to uh, actually have uh, polishing because it visually cuts down a lot of the weight of the watch. I said visually. Now, in terms of the price on this, um, you can get these for, uh, looks like 24.90 Swiss francs um, directly from Symer, which comes out to roughly about 2,500 bucks USD, um, which honestly for a piece in terms of what it's packing and the fact that it's an independent brand, um, I'd say is probably right about uh, what you'd find median price for something like this. It's not super expensive um, for what it is. It's not super cheap either. It's probably right there in the middle, um, which I don't mind too much. So uh, the diameter on here is 42 millimeters. It has a 15 millimeter thickness, which actually isn't bad for um, a chronograph being 15 millimeters, 50 millimeters lug to lug. Um, so although it is very compact and does have some nice kind of swooping down lugs, you're going to see there, um, it is still ultimately a somewhat long lug to lug at 50, but not, you know, it's not 52 or above. So still within range where it could be definitely very wearable for folks with smaller wrists. It's fully stainless steel, mostly polished again, uh, apart from those really nice hairline satin brushed uh, tops of the lugs there. Again, kind of wish that they would have done that more just because of how impressed I am with the transition and the level of satinization on the fine hairline that is really really nice so <laughs> that's a killer feature i wish there was more of it um 
Now getting into this sapphire, of course it is quite an odd shape because it is squared, um, but it is also domed. So again, it's just finding really unique, tricky features on this watch. And honestly, if it had a different, um, you know, a different moniker there besides their brand name, if it was from somewhere else, it'd probably be a lot more appreciated and probably cost a lot more as well. So you do, you are getting double domed uh, sapphire with inner AR coating. So even when you get to harsh angles, you can see it remains very legible with very little distortion on the crystal, which is great, uh, especially since there are a lot of fine details to take in when it comes to this watch. So it is nice to actually be able to see them at very harsh angles, even when it's, you know, at this angle, how can you even tell the time? But the nice thing is you can still get in and appreciate all the little nuances and fine details that come along with just the dial design itself, which, hey, everybody loves a good dial, and this dial definitely has a lot going for it. So inside, um, actually, before we get to that, push-pull crown signed, and then you have the pushers here that almost act um, as crown guards, but it has dedicated crown guards on either side. So there's a nice little integrated look there. Then we get to the back and check that out. Really beautiful movement. You can see it's the automatic Valju ETA 7750. Uh, you know, nothing groundbreaking from that perspective, but uh, you can see that it does have blued screws, which is great, and the finishing is fantastic. And this is a really great movement, uh, you know, regardless. <laughs> so uh, definitely one of the nicer Swiss movements you can get. Uh, it is a little bit uh, on the thicker side, but it is a chronograph and it's not, you know, um, yeah, it's shy about that. There's a reason why this movement finds itself in many Swiss chronographs. Um, it's because it's a great movement and it is really well done and it's well done here as well. So you, you know, let's get into the dial, some of the details. Uh, there's definitely a lot to cover here. Check out all those little glints of light and the way that they play off of the different textures and finishing. Um, so getting into it, we do have applied indices which are high polished and faceted, which is great. You can see really unique uh, shape there as they kind of uh, widen, but at the same time slope and kind of taper off as they go to the outer edges of the dial. Um, we do have, of course, even though most of the dial is black, you're still getting different finishes within that black. Uh, the 12 o'clock, 30 minute, and 6 o'clock, 12 hour subdials are in silver um, and have their own finishing to them as well. You can see the way the light grabs and plays off of the different finishes and textures is really, really gorgeous. And then uh, the main Inner dial has a sunray finish um, with a 60 minute index ring that goes around that's kind of in the middle that separates it from the outer blackened portion which actually has a bit of a kind of radial finish to it which is really cool. You're also getting um, polished and skeletonized hands. So there's a lot of tricks that are happening here and those skeletonized hands are very helpful when it comes to a uh, <laughs> a chronograph, mainly because as the hour hands are going around, uh, the bigger those hands are going to be, the less you're going to be able to see in terms of the subdials. So it's nice to see the subdials uh, being able to breathe a bit thanks to the um, the skeletonized hands, which aren't you know any crazy or iconic shape. Um, but the fact that they are nicely detailed is something that I can appreciate. Why don't we actually engage the chronograph here? Nice tactile thud, something you really can't get from a quartz chronograph, even a mecha quartz chronograph with the mechanical um, linkage system, which will be better um, than a standard quartz pusher, which is basically just a button that you can smush um, it's still not going to be able to compare to the great engagement you're going to get here. I mean, it would be nice if it had a vertical clutch, um, but still uh, very nice and really a pleasure to utilize. And you can see it very snappy. It doesn't 
jump out or jut. It's just really well done into nice tight tolerances. So um, you can also notice that the hands are polished for your standard timing. Uh, so you can see the hour, the minute, and then the running seconds hand there, all polished, and then they're all painted for the chronograph timing features where they're gonna have black hands on the subdials, and then of course the red painted hand for the main seconds there. Very cool. The water resistance on this one, surprising. It does have a decent amount of water resistance, five atmospheres or 50 meters, uh, which isn't bad by any means. Uh, typically for more dressy watches, you'd be looking at around 30 meters. Um, so it's nice to get 50 meters here. 100 would have been really confidence inspiring, but hey, you can't have it all. Uh, it does have 22 millimeter lugs, which are quite proportional considering the case is, uh, you know, relatively wide, especially within this kind of square aspect. Although I do like that, although, you know, the outside is very square, the inside is still very rounded and very traditional. So it just has a little bit of life and kind of play to it, which I can appreciate as somebody who, you know, has experienced and owns a ton of watches. So you're getting this nice black leather strap with a crocodile pattern and it has the white contrast stitching. You're also getting a very nice milled solid deployant clasp there, uh, which has a put bu push button feature. And let me give it a quick wipe. A very nicely finished buckle there, just fantastic. The pushers. None of this looks like a uh, parts bin special. It all looks like it was made specifically for this model, which again, something in those details I can appreciate. It does have a two millimeter taper, so it's gonna taper down from 22 to 20, uh, where you're gonna get this nice everything milled, um, everything quite handsome. So actually that reminds me, um, while I have this out, one thing I'll do is I'm just gonna go ahead and put this on versus cutting away. And then what I'll do is you and I, First, we're gonna do this, right? Because if we get up too close, we're gonna get a lot of lens distortion, the watch is gonna look bigger. So let's keep it down here, and let's actually just bring the camera in a little bit tighter so we can enjoy the look of this in some detail without getting the distortion that comes with it. So you can see it fits really well on my seven and a quarter to seven and a half inch wrist. Very nice, and typically squared watches are gonna wear larger. Um, in this case, I think because of the play and the way that they break up the dial spacing, it actually does help it wear a little bit more compact. But again, this is not uh, by any means some vintage inspired petite piece. This is really a very nice kind of showpiece. It has a lot going on. It's it's taking the hard road of adding complexity at a lot of places. And then um, while I have it on the wrist, we can actually take a quick look into this little pamphlet that comes with it, where you learn a little bit about their brand dating all the way back. Check that out, very, very cool. You can see the table of contents. I like that they break everything down. Um, they cover their heritage. A lot of great references here. And this is the type of stuff that, you know, a watch company doesn't really have to add in. But isn't it nice, though, when they do include stuff like this? Um, let me know in the comments below if there's any brands that you know of that either did provide anything really cool like this or that you wish would. I'll say one that I wish would to provide something like this is Grand Seiko because... Um, that Grand Seiko wasn't cheap that I bought, and let me tell you, it'd be really cool if it came with at least some level of a, of a brochure that just covered some of the cool, fun things. You know, I even like got to the point to where I looked online to see if I could buy a Grand Seiko book just to kind of pair with it and appreciate. But I love that it kind of talks about, of course, their workshop and their academy and you know everything that they do you know they're really passionate about watchmaking and then they go into some of the other models here um, this retrograde model was very cool similar to uh, the one that I have on and but you know of course uh, similar I'd say design architecture but you know within uh, a totally different vein in terms of the type of watch 
that was one that I really wouldn't mind looking at either. So I don't know if you guys want to see that one. Let me know. Maybe I can reach out to Simer and they'll send one along. Uh, and then of course the Times Square Chronograph. This one really stood out to me. Of course I am I appreciate chronographs. I think they're one of the more useful complications that are out there. And uh, you know I'm, I'm happy to say that the pictures and uh, you know in the metal it does look like the same watch. So it's not misrepresented in any way. Uh, which is nice really cool skeletons um you know i'm not huge into skeletonized dials but i can appreciate it and i know why so many folks enjoy them it's just again of the love of mechanical time uh timekeeping so you get to see that uh very cool this little small seconds action here with a very nice organic kind of layout um i do like that it's you know avoiding typical symmetry and, and it's playing with this asymmetrical uh, layout and even getting playful with some of the colors there as you can see so very cool and then, you know it's just these little touches uh, that brands when they do it but they don't really need to it's just something I can appreciate you know and I and I do like the way this watch looks I will say that it uh, doesn't have a whole lot of loom on here uh, but we'll still do a loom shot and kind of low light transition and get into the closing thoughts though okay let's go ahead and hit the lights here okay as you can see it's really just the hour and minute hand and you know without anything loomed on the dial it is pretty tough to tell kind of what time it is especially since the watch is offset but one thing of course i always love to work in to these low light transition i'm sorry into these loom shots is low light transitions because you're not always going to be out in the middle of a field enjoying direct sunlight. A lot of times you're gonna find yourself coming in and out of buildings, walking underneath overhangs or the shade of a tree, maybe just spending time in your favorite automobile. So it is nice to see what these colors, textures and finishes render like in less than optimal lighting to even include some harsh lighting that would typically, you know, kind of uh, show, oh, look at that. <laughs> of course it falls down. Um, so nice to see how these render in this mixed lighting and you can see I actually did uh, run the chronograph there so you guys can get a little bit more visual play as we close out here but you can see the light actually catches really well and it's still quite legible with like medium lighting like you can see that you can absolutely tell what time it is without direct lighting even if I'm just reflecting it kind of off the ceiling in the dark room that I'm recording this in so you can see quite nice with the indirect still quite legible and a lot of it has to do with the different textures that they chose to use and the way that it's going to capture and reflect light in different ways you can see now a little bit of more texture to that center section there that's going to be more sun ray a little bit sedate but then the uh kind of concentric machining that's done on that outer black portion definitely catches light in a completely different way and then of course you have all of the silver highlights and colors that are also playing together very very nicely so with that said we'll go ahead and get this light back on and get into some closing thoughts so guys on the wrist very balanced proportions although this is larger it's i wouldn't consider it bulbous or oversized feeling um, it's very secure um, on the wrist thanks to that strap layout being quite rigid in all the right places so we're talking about these upper portions here that are gonna give you a little bit more structure a little bit more security which is great um, and then in terms of model variants this is it uh, I hope that in the future they decide to play around a little bit more um, you know with this layout because it's a really gorgeous case um, again, I'd love to see more of it brushed just because of how fantastic uh, they did the brushing on the top of the lugs. Um, and then, yeah, I definitely would love to see some other layouts in terms of their dial, you know, be a little bit more playful with it. Maybe take something a little bit more thematically, um, lean it towards motorsports because this type of squared case really does look cool and I, I believe would be able to fit within that genre pretty well. Um, 
in terms of comparable models, there are you know quite a few different 7750 powered chronos on the market, um, with mostly Swatch Group brands coming in the lower price points. Uh, you know, outside of Longines or Mito, won't really have this level of decoration on the movement. So even though Swatch Group does have accessibility to you know ETA value movements, it doesn't mean that they're going to be putting the best ones or the most decorated ones in those cheaper watches uh, that are more entry level uh, and less again you're thinking more mid-tier and kind of within the Mito range which they're going to have a lot of nice decorations there and then of course Longines um, you know in that kind of upper entry level luxury range but to compare this to something like you would find in a Hamilton that this movement's going to be finished a lot nicer uh, or a Tissot for that matter and that's there's some special variations you know we might get some cool uh, little, you know, custom oscillating weights that look like uh, vehicle motorsports parts on the Tissot side. But, you know, for the most part, um, I wouldn't compare this directly to, you know, some gray market $800 Swatch Group watch. One, it's gray market. Uh, the actual cost is going to be probably closer to $1,500 or $1,200, um, you know, and then you're just buying it from a dealer that's not marketing it up a lot. So, um, again, not necessarily an apples to apples comparison for other watches that are going to be running the same movement but then when you start getting into micro brands yeah that's this again this isn't the cheapest 7750 swiss made watch it's not the most expensive either far from the most expensive actually um, there's some very expensive watches that run the same movement so um, I think it's still, again, still within a decent sweet spot um, in that, uh, you know, if you do like it, I wouldn't feel like you're really being overpaid, um, but you're just not getting some slamming deal either uh, where it's, it's irresistible at that price point. So for me, guys, the bottom line, while not feeling like some tremendous value, it just it doesn't feel overpriced at the same time right so it's it's kind of a little indifferent in that way not very polarizing um you know it is nice sometimes when something comes out really cheap um really affordable it, it kind of makes it irresistible or when something is so expensive you're kind of like all right well there has to be something to that like why is it so expensive and it almost adds to the allure unfortunately this doesn't kind of get to benefit from either of those it doesn't get to be ultra cheap and affordable but it doesn't get to be super expensive to the point where it's just like creating hype or you know luxury connotations around it but with that said you know um if you enjoy the overall aesthetic i think you'd be really happy uh with the Times square you know again in the future i'd love to see a motorsports themed variant paired uh, to this excellent case with maybe some more vibrant color play um, accentuating all of the fine details that feel more understated in this current iteration so this is actually a pretty cool piece my showed it to my wife she actually really liked it um, you know so it's definitely very specific um, I don't think there's much out here, there that looks like this so maybe it's not a look that you're looking for per se but I think when you find it you definitely will stop and take an extra look at it um, and yeah especially for non-watch people they see this and they think wow that's an, what an expensive watch should look like so if you're somebody that cares about stuff like that then <laughs> hey you found a, another watch that uh that does look you know pretty expensive so i mean feel quite expensive as well so um you know that's what i got on it but let me know what you guys think in the comments below if you like the video please do it like and if you haven't already please do subscribe for more content just like this thanks guys